Welcome to the Gigaspaces TV Cloudify introduction screencast. In this screencast, what we'll see is what Cloudify is, what it can do for you, and we'll also walk through a quick demonstration of one of the example applications so you can see it in action. What Cloudify is, is, is it's operations lifecycle management. It's been designed for the cloud, as you can see, um, but it's really appropriate for anything. What it does is it manages the entire artifact lifecycle of an entire deployment. Whenever you deploy an application, it normally depends on an application server and a database or something like that. Um, maybe an app operations platform in the case of a cloud. What normally happens with that situation is you have someone who deploys uh, an application server, someone who deploys a, a Oracle database or whatever. Uh, then you have a DBA go back and configure the uh, database. Then you have an operations guy who takes your uh, artifact, your ear, or your war, and your, he deploys it into that application server and configures Apache so that it's pointing to the application server and redirects everything. Um, if there's a problem, then they have to call someone. They have to say, okay, is it the database or is it the uh, application server? What's going on? And they call various people until they figure out which component is having the problem. Then that person comes in and they have to make sure availability is met. And, you know, it's really kind of a pain for everybody. The cloud makes it even worse because you normally have different levels of allocation. You have over allocation, under allocation, um, and different, you know, moving parts can fail. What Cloudify does is it takes all of that and does it for you. It actually can deploy your database and configure your database. It, it can uh, install your application server, install Apache, and point everything to everything else so that, you know, if something should go down, not only can it monitor it, you know, your components and tell you about them, but it can also uh, make sure they're up. If your database disappears, for example, it can not only notify you, but it can also install a new database for you if that's what you so desire. It can make sure your database is up and deploy to into it and you know your schema is up. And then it can tell your application server, by the way, here's where your database is. Um, in a cloud, of course, you can actually get much more power out of that because not only are you configuring single nodes of, of availability like a database, but you can actually say, you know, what are my system loads? Am I over allocated or under allocated? And you can have Cloudify manage your application lifecycle so that it allocates new nodes if you need them, or deallocates nodes if they're under underutilized. Um, what that actually gives you is a lot. You know, it, not only can you, you know, control your allocation, which is an important thing to manage costs. But it can also allow you to move from a private to a public cloud with very little work. Um, you can deploy into a local cloud for deployment for development, which is what we'll be looking at today. Um, and then, you know, if it, when it comes time to deploy into, um, for example, Azure or Amazon, you simply tell Cloudify, by the way, here's where you, here's where I want you to go for this. It's a one, you know, one operation move from an internal to an external cloud, whether it's for deployment or, you know, production or, you know, testing, whatever you, you know, whatever you need. So the way that Cloudify works is it can, takes your artifacts, which are basically zips of your, uh, you know, zip files of your art deployable components, your MySQL database or your, application server, um, and it applies something called a recipe to it. And a recipe is basically a list of things to run, you know, lifecycle management and things like that. Let's take a look at that. Here we have a travel application, which is, again, one of the demonstrations that comes with the uh, Cloudify application to, uh, download. This is the top level uh, configuration, which is basically a groovy file. It's a DSL that allows you to easily and, and conveniently, you know, describe your application. Um, here, you know, again, we have a DSL. It is, you know, an application. It's called travel, which is, you know, makes sense for the travel application. And it defines two services. One is Cassandra and the other one is Tomcat. You have a very simple declaration here. You say, here's the service, and here's some data about it. It's called Cassandra, um, and the other service is called Tomcat. And there is a dependency on Tomcat to Cassandra, which is very easily expressed here. 
If you look at the actual services themselves, you have, here's the you know, Cassandra service being uh, defined. You have the service, again, named Cassandra. You have an icon for it. You have the number of instances you want, it to, you want to have deployed. You have a type, which allows you to specify what's going on with it. And you have a life cycle, which says, you know, we want to initialize. Uh, this is what happens before you start it. Here's what happens when you start it to start the actual service. And here's what you run after. Um, you also have plugins which allow you to uh, determine whether the system's running or not. You can actually determine metrics. Um, again, you have a JMX plugin here so that you can actually see what's going on via JMX and, and monitor everything. Uh, through the, the Cloudify UI, you can actually see uh, what your events are. You can actually see a user interface here. Um, you know, what you really have here is a lot of control over everything your deployment needs. If you can measure it, you can actually plug it into Cloudify so you can see what's going on at any given time and you can have uh, Cloudify do things based on triggers based on those metrics. So that if you found the CPU lo load was too high, you can actually have Cloudify measure that, not only tell you about it, but deploy a new Cassandra instance. Um, looking at the Tomcat service, you see the same thing. You have, you know, the type, the number of instances, and a lifecycle that goes with it. Um, if we wanted to look at the installation for Tomcat, for example, what we have is we have a configuration, you know, that's stored in Tomcat properties. You can actually run a sequ sequence of events where we're making a directory, we're getting a download, we're unzipping it, um, we're getting an application uh, web archive, copying that web archive to a uh, configuration directory and then changing the, the uh, mode so that it can run. So you can see here what you have is a sequence of steps. You basically have just like a real recipe. You have a sequence of operations and you have a DSL that allows you to, to uh, manage those operations very easily. Now, let's be honest, operations, you know, uh, deployments run like this anyway. I mean, you know, I've run application uh, deployments that were run from Excel, Excel files where you basically have like 50 rows. Every one of them says, you know, go to this directory, copy this in, change the mode to this, unzip it, um, modify this file to say that. Um, you know, basically it's a deployment recipe. The only difference is we actually did it by hand working off of an Excel spreadsheet, whereas here we have a Groovy file that uh, actually encapsulates all of those operations in sequence in order. And since it's Groovy, we can have uh, application logic to see if something worked or if something's equivalent to something else. Um, you know, the only difference is we're automating it and because it's a DSL, it's very easy to express. So uh, now that we've done this, let's take a look at the ac actual Cloudify application itself and, and watch it run. So what we're going to do here is we're, we've actually started the Cloudify command line. Um, there's a command line interface that allows us to set up a local cloud. That means that it's going to start up a whole bunch of different services um, on my local machine, primarily for development purposes that allows me to, do, to run a complete deployment, which we'll do with the travel application. Um, and what it's doing is it's actually configuring everything, a series, a set of services, um, a management application, elastic services, and things like that. And it's waiting until it runs through. And this is slightly time-lapsed, as you can tell. So give it just a second, and it'll be done. And there we go. So we've got Cloudify running. Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual uh, application itself, the, uh, the uh, user interface for it. We can log in anonymously. Um, you know, it's got uh, uh, authentication in it, but it's primarily for, um, you know, controlled environments, which we don't have here because it's uh, deployed locally. This is the default uh, system running. Um, what we have here is one host, which is the local system, the, the local cloud that we have set up. Um, some agents, uh, management instances, even elastic management, and some service containers, as well as some lookup services. Um, you can see here that we've got some help already. We've got, um, you know, memory management, um, core management. We can see some things already. We can also take a look at the topology. Um, see, so we have one REST interface running. Um, we have one the user the web user interface which is what we're using here. And you can see throughput 
and CPU usage for every one of these components. Um, you can also take a look at infrastructure. OSIRIS is the uh, machine that this is deployed on. It's running Windows, as you can see. Um, the services, again, we have very, very few services, and we can also take a look at application logs as well. Um, so you can see here, you know, you've got a lot of management uh, capabilities just right out of the box. You can see memory utilization, CPU usage, and the services. And we haven't deployed anything yet, um, and we'll want to get to that in just a second where we can see um, you know, the application in motion. So um, let's go ahead and get to that. So what we're doing here is we're actually running the uh, application deployment. This is actually going to go through and download Cassandra. It'll download Tomcat uh, and deploy from, actually it'll download a war as well and deploy all of those into a local file system uh, because it's a local cloud and wait until all the services are started so you have all your dependencies managed. So, so now, now let's, let's go ahead and take a look at our application. application. Uh, it's deployed on port 8080 under uh, the travel uh, context. So we come over here and we see the standard spring travel um, example application. Now, again, this is running under our, um, you know, under our cloud. So what we have then is we have an application that was deployed where we didn't have Cassandra set up, we did not have uh, Tomcat set up. It actually downloaded everything um, on demand from a URL that you know we actually configured. You could do it from a local file system or anything else. And you have a, an application that's deployed from you know soup to nuts, really, from the application context. Um, you know the, the pieces that the application depends on, the services that it depends on, all deployed and managed and monitored by Cloudify so that we can actually see, you know, everything that, that we need to run, um, you know, so that, uh, you know, we can actually run a full deployment um, without having to actually do anything special and we get all the monitoring, we get all of the, um, you know, everything we would expect from a full operations department in one product. And we're deploying locally here, of course, but if we really wanted to, we could actually go ahead and deploy on uh, Amazon or anything else um, with simply by telling it, by the way, deploy, you know, instead of deploying locally, deploy somewhere else. And it, I, we actually have connectors to set up to Azure and Amazon and some others like that so that you have full integration. Um, you know, your operations department doesn't go away, of course. I mean, you still need people to do things. But their jobs get a lot easier and everything becomes more manageable and your deployment your, becomes part of your development, which is really the way that it should be because you should be able to uh, test your deployments just like you can every other aspect of your application. I um, hope this has been interesting. Thank you very much.